Alright guys, what's up? Um, I got this gateway laptop here and my friend wants to sell it. So basically I'm going to wipe it, put on a new version of it, of uh, the operating system, Windows XP Home, and uh, clean the insides for him because I'm sure it's an old computer, so I'm sure it's dusty. And this computer is not very good. Five, uh, 258 megabytes of RAM, 1.6 like gigahertz processor. I just took out the, the wireless card there. So, but yeah, you're going to see when I open this uh, RAM bay here that there's no RAM in it. Well, that's because I took it out already and found out it's DDR1. Well, I have a bunch of sticks of RAM both for laptop and desktop, so I looked around and tried to see if I had an extra stick and all I had was DDR2, so I just left it out for the time being. Forty gig hard drive. This was basic computer. It was just basic. It's old too. I mean, what? This was back in. It says on the sticker, 2004. So six years. Pretty much today. This back then, this was considered like a netbook. Word processing. You know watching videos on the internet, not much other than that, because unfortunately it wasn't built for it. Now here when we open it, you see the slot for the wireless card, two slots, two dims for the RAM, one here and one here, they're stacked on top of each other, so when you put them in, they stack like that and one overlaps the other one. Here you see the chipset, Northbridge chipset, you see the heat sink that covers both the GPU right there and the CPU. I'm going to take that off and show you what that looks like right under there. There's a little bit more of a detailed look at it. There's RAM slots, the slot for the PCI card, for the uh, wireless card. Now this design is different from most laptops. Most laptops have a, a part for the hard drive, a part for the, the uh, wireless card, part for the RAM, and then you have to open the guts of the computer to get the actual um, heat sink like this. So when I opened this computer I was very surprised to see that it was just exposed right with the RAM bay cover, which isn't a very good idea because a lot of people want to just be able to upgrade their RAM. Well, RAM is easy to do, but what if you don't know too much about a computer? You could easily mess something up in here. And for some reason, this screw does not feel like coming undone. There it goes. Yeah, so you could easily mess something up if you don't know what you're doing. So that wasn't very smart of Gateway to do. I'm going to try and... Those are pad for the GPU, pad for the CPU. I'm going to try and put on some thermal paste on those because it's clear thermal paste safe I have on here now and it's dried up. It sucks. I mean, stock thermal paste sucks. So I can lower his temperatures by about 5 degrees doing that. Now, yeah, see? That's another bad thing, leaving the back plate exposed like that. There was just a dog hair on top of the CPU. Now let's go ahead and take out the CPU and show you guys what a laptop CPU looks like. Hmm, where's a Leatherman when you need one? Probably upstairs in my room. Give me a sec, guys. Got it. It's just right over there. Best tool in the entire world. Get yourself one. A leather bin. You'll love it. It has so many different tools just in one little device. So we need a thin screwdriver. Perfect. Got about five different flatheads in here. 
right there, nice and thin, perfect for what we need. Now, be careful not to touch the bottom. Just like a desktop CPU, you see that? Pins, top. You can always tell it's mobile just because it has that one black little heat sink. Desktop, uh, desktop computers typically have the Actually, they do have, not typically, the metal heat sink on the top. So, watch for the triangle. Put it over the triangle. We're golden. And just carefully tighten it back. Okay, we're good. Now, hard drive bay. I had the hardest time getting this the first time, guys. Because it's gateway. I am not a fan of their stuff in the slightest and this was hard because what they did for the hard drive is slide it the screws are still on so probably won't do it with them in but you slide it like that did you see that you get it and it slides up like that but the first time I did it it was stuck I had to get this screwdriver on top of here like this and set it there with the flat head and hold it like that at an angle and just bang on it and it popped finally. It was so hard to get out the first time. 40 gig IDE Western Digital hard drive, nothing special. So since this is my first time ever taking apart this laptop from Gateway, it's going to be different because it's not the same from Dell I heard. So, yeah, because usually Dell has a notch right here in the front next to this power button. There's like a little tiny screwdriver notch. You stick it down in there and pop it up. So, I don't know what to do for this one. So, give me a sec while I get all this figured out, please. annoying because you have to t do that with every single screw on the back plate. Take it out, unscrew it, flip it over, take out the screw, unscrew it, flip it over, take out the screw. Now normally what I try to do is leave the screws in the socket if they can, if it won't affect how I take it apart, like unscrew it, take off that component, and then screw it back in. But unfortunately, not everything is like that. So, if you have pieces of tape laying around, just go ahead and grab those pieces of tape, set up, set out a power screw. And like if I were to do that for this, all these screws you see me putting right here, I would say. Uh, back panel for the bottom this whole black back panel for these two I said over here for a hard drive I tape it and say hard drive, but I've done laptop teardowns several times and Don't really need to do that laptops with them in their 60 million screws. Almost there guys. I'm reaching about 10 minutes so I'm going to go ahead and make this a two part video.